Hey, how's it going? Out here at the shop, solo mission tonight. Gonna put a new clutch on the ghoul. Why might you ask? I'll show you. Take a look at this sucker right here. Boom! Getting a new big turbo. That's for another day. So we got this STM Rage 4 WCP primary clutch that's going on and this straight cut 45 degree helix that we'll also be throwing in. I'm just gonna focus on putting the primary on tonight, do a little how-to on that, see how things go. Maybe I'll get to the helix as well. Who's to say? For right now, I'm gonna get to taking this clutch cover off, and then we'll go over the steps of how to pull the primary off. Got a nice little trick for doing that. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. If you use grease, you're not gonna want to after this. Hey, side note, for you 17 to 19 X3 owners, the factory clutch cover bolts are T30 Torx, just like everything else on this machine. Okay, that sucks, because they always strip out, and yeah, they always strip out. Very annoying. If you'll notice on mine, boom, what are those you say? Eight millimeters. How'd I get those? Just hop on Rocky Mountain ATV, follow the link from our parts store, go there, get yourself some model year 20 and newer X3 clutch cover bolts. They're both eight millimeter and T30. Pretty neat, real cheap, and it'll save you a lot of headache in the end. So go get those. All right, now I'm gonna take this off for real. All right, he got the belt off. World's best belt from Evo. Holding up great, no surprise. Used one of these style belt tools to take the belt off. Works pretty good when you have one of these Evo helixes on there. A lot nicer than the factory tool, just saying. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, because we're pulling the entire primary clutch off, uh, I'm going to pull the secondary off, and that will allow us to slide the primary off as a whole. Um, otherwise, you have to split the primary to get it to fit out of there, because it's a big dog. A lot of material there, not a lot of room. Uh, so I'm going to pull this off, just a 17 millimeter bolt in there. I'm uh, going to need to take this top bolt off of the sway bar link. That'll fold down. We'll be able to access the primary clutch bolt, which is a 22 millimeter. I'll get that off, and then I'll show you the super not-so-secret way of doing a pro job on pulling a primary clutch off. All right, secondary is off. You don't need a puller on this one because it just rides on these splines. There's no taper that you need to pull it off of, um, unlike the primary. Got the primary bolt out. Um, yeah, just use the nice old Milwaukee. That sucker's BA, gets the job done every time for us. And I'm gonna introduce to you the special tool that we're gonna use to pull this primary clutch off with no problem. Boom, got them. Just your classic bread. White bread, wheat bread, hot dog bun, hamburger bun. Doesn't really matter. So a lot of people will use grease uh, to create like a hydraulic pressure to pull the primary clutch off. A lot of people will do that when they try to use the puller dry and it doesn't do anything or they bend a puller. And it certainly works, but it does make quite a big mess uh, that can take quite a while to clean up. And if you don't clean it up, uh, you run into the issue of potentially having grease left over on the taper or it somehow ends up on the taper. Um, and then once you put everything back together and you're driving, having a good time, the uh, clutch will spin on the taper and snap your primary bolt and then your primary clutch falls off. So nobody wants that. With bread, you don't get that. So all you gotta do is take some of this bread, this hot dog bun in this example, and just wad it up and jam it in there. And you need to put a fair amount in there. This stuff is, well, up until about 20 minutes ago, it was in the freezer, so it's kind of mush. So I think that'll actually help us. So we're just gonna put a little bit in there and then just pack it in with the puller. Let's put a little bit more in. And it does clean up pretty easy once you're done. Just get in there with a pick 
or an air blow gun. All right, got probably close to a full bun in there now. Let's see what happens. There she goes. Hot dog bun for the freaking win. Now let's just pull the puller off of there and slide the clutch out and we'll see what it looks like. All right, clutch is off. Just pulled it off of the taper there and it just slides out the back. No big deal there. So you can see in here, ah, poor lighting. I know I'm not a pro like Leo is. It's got some bread built up in there. No big deal. Just get it out with a pick. Probably get a blow gun. But yeah, bread, 100%. Best way to pull a clutch off. It's clean. Not going to spin the primary on the taper. It's cheap. Not really that messy. Uh, the only problem would be is if your name's Nick Seuss and you leave all this bread on the ground, uh, rats show up here and uh, yeah, then they make an even bigger mess. So don't do that. Uh, so I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up right now and yeah, then we'll work on putting the new one on. All right, so the whole bread mess, if you wanna call it that, wasn't that bad, has been cleaned up. So now what we need to do is take the new primary clutch and made it to the taper on the crankshaft. So to do that, we're going to take some valve lapping compound. We're gonna put some on the taper on the crankshaft. We're going to put some in the clutch uh, we're going to set the clutch onto the taper, and then we're going to spin it around 25 times by hand. So just going to uh, place some inboard pressure on the clutch while we're turning it, and that's going to allow those surfaces to uh, mate up perfectly. Um, and yeah, if you don't do that, again, it goes back to running into issues where could spin on the taper and you don't want that uh so make sure you do this when you're putting this new clutch on from stm and uh shouldn't have any problems so we'll film that right now so i just have a little sharpie line on the clutch so it makes it a little bit easier to keep track of how many times you've spun it. All right, give her 25 and see how she looks. One eternity later. All right, so once you've done 25 rotations, you want to pull the clutch back off and clean all the valve lapping compound off the taper on the clutch and the crankshaft. Because if you don't, guess what? It's going to spin. Don't want that. We've talked about that bad stuff. So we'll pull this off. We've got some brake cleaner in a rag here. Get all that stuff looking nice. And then we'll be ready to bolt this sucker on. No problem. Alrighty. Tapers are clean, both the crank and the clutch. So now all that's left to do is bolt this sucker down. So we're gonna take our factory primary clutch bolt, ditch the stock washer. There's a retaining washer. That's going to sit at the end of the clutch like that. And STM gives you a lock washer that we're going to use as well. Thread that sucker in there. And it gets torqued to 97 foot-pounds. So I'll get out the old Snap-on digital torque wrench and get that sucker cranked down. And we'll be all done with the primary. I still have to do the secondary and change the helix. That might be a project for tomorrow. It's getting kind of late. We'll see. 
Hey, shocking turn of events. Digital torque wrench is missing. So we got all reliable here. Alrighty, that should do it. I'm kind of eager to see what the engagement is, even though I've only got 30 inch tires on the back. So I think I'm just gonna put the secondary back on and see what it does. All right, put everything back together. Um, like I said, didn't change the helix out. Just kind of want to see what it does before doing that because I'm impatient. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt because I have this carbon fiber liner to protect the clutch housing in the event the belt blows. Normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but I have a belt temp sensor and I had to drill a hole in the liner for it to work. So I had to remove the belt temp sensor and that was kind of a pain, but it's back together now. So let's fire it up and see how it does. It's not going to be exact because, like I said, it's on 30-inch tires right now, and it'll have 32s on it at the end of the day. But let's just see what it does. Make sure it doesn't fly off or anything. So for this application, I'm going to want it to be up in the vicinity of like 3,500, honestly, because uh, that big turbo is going to take a lot of energy to get spooled up on the line. So I want this thing to be able to leave strong, um, so I'll put the 32s on it eventually and see what it does, and we'll probably have to make some changes uh, to the primary weights, different spring, whatever. All part of the game. I'm going to call it a day. Been pretty busy. Pretty tired. And uh, come back tomorrow. Get that helix changed out. Not sure where this is going to fall in relation to a video. It's not my job to figure out. We got someone dedicated to do that. So hopefully he does a good job and figures it out. Appreciate you.